the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose providence never fails in its design, keep from us, we humbly beseech you, all that might harm us, and grant all that works for our good, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Tobit. Grief-stricken in spirit, I, Tobit, groaned and wept aloud. Then with sobs I began to pray. You are righteous, O Lord, and all your deeds are just. All your ways are mercy and truth. You are the judge of the world. And now, O Lord, may you be mindful of me and look with favor upon me. Punish me not for my sins, nor for my inadvertent offenses, nor for those of my ancestors. We sinned against you and disobeyed your commandments. So you handed us over to plundering, exile, and death, till you made us the talk and reproach of all the nations among whom you have dispersed us. Yes, your judgments are many and true in dealing with me as my sins and those of my ancestors deserve. For we have not kept your commandments, nor have we trodden the paths of truth before you. So now deal with me as you please and command my life breath to be taken from me that I may go from the face of the earth into dust. It is better for me to die than to live because I have heard insulting calumnies and I am overwhelmed with grief. Lord, command me to be delivered from such anguish. Let me go to the everlasting abode. Lord, refuse me not. For it is better for me to die than to endure so much misery in life and to hear these insults. On the same day at Ecbatana in Media, it so happened that Ragul's daughter Sarah also had to listen to abuse from one of her father's maids. For she had been married to seven husbands, but the wicked demon at Asmodeus killed them off before they could have intercourse with her as it is prescribed for wives. So the maid said to her, you are the one who strangles your husbands. Look at you. You have already been married seven times, but you have had no joy with any of your husbands. Why do you beat us? Is it on account of your seven husbands? because they are dead? May we never see a son or daughter of yours. The girl was deeply saddened that day, and she went into an upper, upper chamber of her house where she planned to hang herself. But she reconsidered, saying to herself, no, people would level this insult against my father. You had only one daughter, but she hanged herself because of ill fortune. 
and thus would I cause my father in his old age to go down to the netherworld laden with sorrow. It is far better for me not to hang myself, but to beg the Lord to have me die so that I need no longer live to hear such insults. At that time then, she spread out her hands and facing the window, poured out her prayer. Blessed are you, O Lord, merciful God, and blessed is your holy and honorable name. Blessed are you in all your works forever. At that very time, the prayer of these two suppliants was heard in the glorious presence of Almighty God. So Raphael was sent to heal them both, to remove the cataracts from Tobit's eyes so that he might again see God's sunlight, and to marry Ragul's daughter Sarah to Tobit's son Tobiah, and then drive the wicked demon Asmodeus from her. The word of the Lord. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. In you I trust, let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exalt over me. No one who waits for you shall be put to shame. Those shall be put to shame who heedlessly break faith. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your kindness are from old. In your kindness, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice. He teaches the humble his way. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Some Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus and put this question to him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, If someone's brother dies, leaving a, a wife but no child, his brother must take, his, take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first married a woman and died, leaving no descendants. So the second brother married her and died, leaving no descendants, and the third likewise, and the seven left no descendants. Last of all, the woman also died. At the resurrection, when they arise, whose wife will she be? For all seven had married her. Jesus said to them, Are you not misled because you do not know the scriptures? or the power of God. When they arise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but they are like the angels in heaven. As for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the passage about the bush, how God told them, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not God of the dead, but of the living, you are greatly misled. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. 
Maybe we see this approach of the Sadducees before Jesus. The Sadducees, as the scriptures reveal, who say there is no resurrection. And of course, what they're, part of what they are doing here is they're trying to present the resurrection as totally foolish, as, a, as just a, a weird idea. So they're presenting this idea. The example of which we, we hear taking place in our first reading today, this, this idea that was brought forward in the very law of Moses, which of course Jesus held to and um, all Jews held to, that if, um, if, a, bro- if, um, if a, a husband dies, then his brother would, would come. If a husband dies with no children, then the, the, hus- then the brother would marry that, that woman so to give her a child so that she has someone to take care of her in her old age. But of course, uh, p- part of what's taking place here is this understanding that when a, when, a, when a man marries a woman, in a sense, she becomes his property. That's not true today, but that was part of the law back then. And so what they're presenting here is in the resurrection. So part of the reason, of course, that a man was free to marry a woman later was that it, if, if, the, if her pre- previous husband had died, then she is free to marry. She's no one's property at that time. I realize how scandalous it is even just to speak in that way today. But part of what they're presenting here is if there is a resurrection, um, then there's not going to be peace in the resurrection because there's going to be all of this fighting over, over property. And of course, that's what Jesus here reveals. It says, you don't understand anything of what's really going to be taking place that those who die will become like angels. There's no giving and taking in marriage. And of course, it's important to see there that he's saying they will be like angels, not that they will be angels, because of course we know that there's no change of a soul when they go to heaven. But in what way like the angels? The angels see the face of God. They are perpetually looking upon the face of God. And that's what is for those who enter into resurrection, who enter into that that new life, always gazing, being in that beatific vision. And because of that, our hearts, so there's no property, there's no giving over on property, we are totally taken up in the love of God. But it's also important to notice here, he's not, Jesus here is not saying that all relationships are destroyed. He's not saying here that the love that was experienced here on earth now is no more. I've heard from people, you know, wondering, you know, am am I still going to to know my spouse? Is my spouse going to know me when we are in heaven? And it's important to see that there's nothing in the gospel today that speaks against that. In fact, it it would seem to suggest the opposite. You know, we we don't become non-human when we go to heaven. We we carry with us all of those loves that we held before. Just, it's just that now, because we are seeing the very face of God uh, in, a, in a far more deep way, that love is totally purified. And so we can expect that actually the union that we've had with our spouses here is going to be purified so that that union can be even more deep, more good, more beautiful. And in the same way, those who go before the face of God remember those who are here on earth in a far deeper, far richer way that they can be even closer to us now, those who have gone before us and are before the face of God, than they ever could be here on earth. It's just important for us to see that we don't, we don't become forgetful when we, go, when we go before God. And that's revealed for us, especially in the gifts of the saints, they upon whose prayers we rely so deeply that they carry with us those who they care for. In fact, the, the people that they care for increases. The saints look down upon us and they care for us. I mean, I've heard before that they actually choose us. They, they, they're rooting for us, whispering to God on behalf of us. And that's that, uh, in, in all of that, in a way, is it's a mysterious part of God's will of drawing us more closely, uni- united together in a bond of love. So today we rejoice in that, 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 that this love that we experience here on earth is not going to go away. 
but it will be increased and strengthened. And remember, we remember those who have gone before us too, that they also still, even now, are loving us. Let's stand together and offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. That the power of the living God may inspire and strengthen all who preach and teach in the church, we pray to the Lord. That all who hold public office may be guided by the Holy Spirit to use their power and authority to bear the fruits of peace and justice. We pray to the Lord. That the Lord may comfort and console those who grieve the loss of a loved one. We pray to the Lord. That the Holy Spirit may open the minds and hearts of this faith community to God's will in our lives. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for Carson and Elaine Kirkus, for whom this Mass is being offered. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Trusting in your compassion, O Lord, we as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, and reign forever and ever. Lamb of God, be healed. We are a spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Governed by your Spirit, we pray, O Lord, those you freed with the body and blood of your Son, the professing you not just in word or in speech, but also in works and in truth, we may merit to enter the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.